Let's see. Robot. Large robot. Giant robot. Gigantic robot. <laughs> Darren, quick hog in the DS. Not until I finish creating my mighty army of... Oh, the memory thermometer thing has run out of space. You can never make as many things as you'd like to in this game. Won't be satisfied until you've created all the robots you want, Darren. Hmm. Sorry about that. Darren was just playing Super Scribblenauts, the sequel to last year's DS Smash hit. It's the puzzle game with the bold claim. It lets you create anything out of thin air. Anything from battleships to bunyips. As long as it's a thing, it's not copyrighted or, you know, rude, chances are it's in the Scribblenauts dictionary. The biggest new feature in this Scribblenauts is adjectives, which are words that describe other words. For instance, in the phrase friendly dragon, the word dragon would be a noun, while friendly would be an adjective. So while it's still the same game on the surface, it's way more complex under the hood. Multiply tens of thousands of nouns by some adjectives and you've got oodles of possibilities. Mm. And when the game first begins, you're dumped into a sandbox where you can just make whatever you want. Any vehicle, any monster, velociraptor, keyboard cat. But the objective of the game is always the same. And the moment it begins, it's all about giving your brain a workout to get to the starite. It's a little thing, but I love the way the mission select screen worked. Each starite you find lights up a star in the sky. The more you earn, the more constellations you light up. It's a lot more satisfying than just unghosting a word on a menu. Another solid improvement is that they've gone easy on the action levels. In the first Scribblenauts, there was an equal number of action and puzzle levels, but the action ones didn't really cut it, so they've scaled them back. Also, the controls are better now. You can control Maxwell with the D-pad and the camera with the stylus, or vice versa. It all sounds good in theory, but Super Scribblenauts has one major problem. Bugs. There are lots of them. So many! Sometimes you'll just be playing some ridiculous guessing game where your answers are rejected because the game simply doesn't want to see them. They may be legitimate answers as far as you're concerned, but if they don't match the exact invisible word list inside the game, then you're going to fail. Yeah, there was one stage where you have to equip four different items on Maxwell to satisfy a panel of judges. I put them in a tutu, a cape, and the football helmet, and that made the dancer, the hero, and the footballer happy, but the fourth judge, a cowboy, just could not be reasoned with. I had Maxwell wear a cowboy hat, a Stetson, a 10-gallon hat, nothing worked. The hint suggested I tried to give him something cowboy-like to shoot with, so I tried a gun, a revolver, a rifle, a derringer, and, and still, just nothing. It worked after you reset the game, though, right? Yeah, but, you know, it's the principle of the thing. I mean, the last thing you want in a puzzle game is a bug, because then you start, every time a puzzle comes up, you start thinking, am I just not getting this, or is it a bug? And it just wrecks the game entirely. Yeah, it's just a bit too easy to break the game. Like a brittle, hollowed-out tree trunk in a storm. It's just, it's too easy to make it snap. It's beautiful. Thanks. The word recognition is all over the place and sometimes the star right gets stuck in a wall. Mm. Oh, and this is the first DS game that we've reviewed that's actually managed to crash the console. Achievement unlocked. As in Scribblenauts 1, you can redo a level for a synonym bonus by using three different words. One had this kid that needed cheering up, so on the first run through I gave him a birthday cake, on the second run a comedian, but on the third run through I thought, you yeah, know, I'll summon a jester, he'll tell us some jokes, he'll make him happy, but the jester went crazy and killed him. Oh. Game over. Maybe he wanted the cake. Who knows, man? Bugs are an accepted part of PC gaming and even 360 and PS3, but on the unpatchable DS, they're unheard of and, quite frankly, a bit unacceptable. It's a shame because there's so much to like about this game. There's lots of little quirky jokes and adorable creatures and things to interact with. The guys at Fifth Cell clearly had a blast making it. They even included unlockable versions of themselves that you can play as. But you just can't escape the bugs. You can do heaps more in this game, but a lot more can go wrong too. So Murphy's Law busts this down to a six and a half from me. I felt like I was being punished more for bad luck than rewarded for success. And I just think if, they, if they'd have the, the puzzle levels from the first Scribblenauts and the controls from Super Scribblenauts, that would make a, a much better game. But with all the bugs here, I just can't go past a six out of 10 rubber chickens.